Hi all, Mr. Bain here. I'm sorry I couldn't be there for back to school night, but I put together a little video and I'm going to talk about our social studies class this year. So as you're watching, if you have any questions, you need clarification on anything, please feel free to reach out to me through email at gregory.bain at hcps.org. So, without further ado, here we go. So, here I have the syllabus for 6th grade contemporary world geography pulled up, and I'm just going to kind of go through it. Um, and first thing I want to talk about is, what are the kids going to be learning this year? Well, these right here are the units that they'll be learning about. And if you take a look here, these are the questions that they should be able to answer at the end of the unit. So the first unit we'll be starting up very soon is called physical geography. And at the end, kids will be able to answer, what are the tools of the geographer? How are maps interpreted? How do maps help us solve problems? Second unit is human geography. This is where it really starts getting fun. How do Earth's physical characteristics influence human activities? Why do people migrate? And why do people settle? Now we get into an introduction to culture. What is culture and what are its characteristics? What factors influence culture? How are cultures similar and diverse? Then we'll get into political systems. What are the purposes of governments? What are the characteristics of a political system? In what ways do various types of government permit, promote, and prohibit ways of life? And how do people attempt to influence the government? Very fascinating. Then we'll get into economic systems. What is the purpose of an economic system? What are the types and characteristics of economic systems? What factors contribute to the development of economic systems? And how are the economies of countries and world regions interdependent? This is when we get to talk about money in all of its forms and trade. Unit six is social institutions. What are examples of social institutions? How do social institutions influence culture? So now we're making connections to previous units. What are the similarities and differences of Christianity, Islam, and Judaism? What are the similarities and differences of Hinduism, Buddhism, and Sikhism? What are the similarities and differences of Shintoism, Taoism, and Confucianism? And why is it important to understand how customs and traditions vary throughout the world? Then towards the end of the year, conflict and cooperation. What are the causes of conflict? How is cooperation important in resolving conflict? And how are people united across the Earth's surface? And finally, we'll wrap up with a unit on globalization. What is globalization? What are the causes of globalization? What are the positive and negative effects of globalization? And what world problems encourage globalization? So here are the units that we'll be studying this year. Students will be accessing much of the content through my YouTube channel. You may have seen this or heard of this um, from your kids or maybe from previous students. I encourage you to take a look. Materials related to class are in the playlist titled Contemporary World Geography. So if I click on this link real quick, let's see if I can do that. We're going to skip the verification. Okay, this is my YouTube channel. I believe very, very strongly that education is not the learning of facts, but the training of minds to think. So from here, you'll see I, I have some fun videos. They're, they're all okay for, for kids to watch, but the videos that kids will be using to learn content are in this playlist, Contemporary World Geography. There's about 30 or so videos that we'll be using all year. Uh, so again, 
I encourage you to take a look and, and by using this, kids can access the content and they can learn really from anywhere where they have an internet connection. We won't be exclusively using this. We'll be doing a lot of learning in many different ways in class, but this is a pretty good resource. So heading back to the syllabus, here's a supply list. Um, everybody should have gotten this. Um, already or something that looks like this, but the main supplies the kids will really need every single day in class are these right here. So every day in social studies, kids will need their earbuds. They'll need a charged Chromebook. So I encourage you to please um, make sure your kids are charging their computer before bed the night before so that it's fully charged. If they come to school with a fully charged Chromebook, it should easily last 24 hours, um, depending upon how much they use it and how they use it. Um, but as long as they have a fully functioning Chromebook, it, it should hold a full charge for a full day easily. They'll need their planner every day, and then they'll need their take-home folder every day, and a pencil. So those are the supplies. These other things they're going to need throughout the year, but they won't need them every single day. So they can leave these other things in their lockers. And when they do need them, I'll give them a heads up and they'll have enough time to make sure and have those. Assignments. Be ready for a variety of assignments. Some will require you, now I'm speaking to the kids, obviously. Some will require you to work alone. And for others, you will collaborate with your classmates. Kids will be working in groups a lot this year. Some of the assignments will be done in school and others will be done at home. Be ready to read, write, think, and participate. I expect you to do your best and I expect you to follow directions. I also expect you to take responsibility and ask for help when you need it. Long-term projects that are turned in late will lose one letter grade for each day past the due date. Assignments should be either typed or written neatly in black, blue ink, or pencil. Um, now, as far as this right here, um, if a child has an excused absence for one day, county policy requires that I give them one extra day to do it. If they're out two days, it's two days. If they're out five days, it's five days. Um, and I will definitely work with the kids um, if they're absent. Um, if a student is homesick, I do not want them doing social studies. Let me, let me make that perfectly clear. If a, a, um, if a child is home, they don't feel well. Um, if they feel like they have to do social studies, their assignment for me is to rest and get better. And we'll take care of all of that when we get back. Okay. Um, it is the student's responsibility to make up all missed work within the time allotted by HCPS absence policy, and I'll be working with them as well. Okay. Harford County Public Schools grading breakdown. There are three categories of grading. There's product, process, and practice. Uh, product by default by the county is 50%. Process is 30% and practice 20%. Product will be pretty much major assignments, major projects, major assessments. Um, most classwork grades will be process. And then occasionally a practice grade might be an exit ticket or answering you know, one or two quick questions. Um, sometimes homework, which is fairly rare, will fall under the practice category. What does a student need to do to get an A? Consistently demonstrate exceptional level of quality and effort. Have all work in on time and completed to exceed expectations. Mastery. Um, I will be sending this out in an email, so if you'd like to review this, um, but this is kind of a general rubric for specific assignments. I will have most of the time individual rubrics. Kids will know very clearly what they have to do to get an A, um, and if they get less than that, um, you know, we can talk about why that happened, um, but expectations will be re really, really clear. Okay, some daily expectations and rules. A lot of these are kind of common courtesy. I ask kids to just raise their hands um, if they have something to say, um, especially if I'm teaching. They've been doing that for years. Nothing new there. Um, yeah, I expect kids to be polite, practice good listening skills, show respect to the teacher and their classmates. Um, 
we talked about the golden rule earlier this year. And if kids can just treat others the way that they'd like to be treated, they're going to be good to go. Be on time. Um, be positive about class activities. Not everybody's going to love everything, but if they can try to have at least a positive attitude, it'll make things a lot easier and a lot more fun. Um, you know, I hope kids participate. I want to hear their ideas. Um, this is very, very important right here. Um, I would encourage you to let your, your child know that if they have a question to please, please reach out to me. That's why I'm here. That's why I get paid the big bucks to help kids and clarify any questions um, that they might have. But I, I can't do that if I don't know. Um, so please let them know any questions that they have. They can just reach out to me either in class, send me an email, whatever they're comfortable with. Uh, you can take a look at this. Um, as far as your misbehavior, um, none of your children will be misbehaving ever. So I really don't need to worry about this too much. Some classroom procedures. Um, uh, again, I, I went over this in you know, pretty good detail with the kids. Um, just expect them when they get to class to have a seat, get ready for class. Um, you can ask them about the rain stick. And rather than me going over all this, you could just ask your child about it and they'll, they know all about it. Um, or you can take a look at this if you want. These are just some procedures. Uh, again, I, I've gone over these in pretty significant detail with the kids, so they should be familiar with it. So that's basically the syllabus. Um, I could talk about how much I love teaching social studies for hours and hours and hours. I could talk about how I love teaching sixth graders for hours and hours. I, I've taught in my 20 years all grades, Harvard County Public Schools, six through 12, um, except for seventh. I haven't taught seventh grade yet, but I, I've taught sixth and eighth grade social studies at the middle school, and then I've taught ninth, 10th, and 11th grade and 12th graders uh, at the high school level. And I can honestly say that I just, sixth grade is kind of my favorite age uh, to teach. They're kids, and I like kids. They're all fun, they're all great, but um, I, I hope a uh, child has a fantastic experience. Um, I encourage you to let them know if they have any concerns, any issues, to please reach out to me, um, as well with, with you all, parents, guardians. Um, if at any time you have any questions or concerns, if you want me to know anything, please feel free to shoot me an email. It's gregory.bain at hcps.org. I can't wait to have a fantastic year, and thank you very much for watching and listening to the video. Take care.